Hello and welcome to You So You. My name is Zoe and this is my channel about all the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I crochet, I spin, I sew, I'm learning to weave. Um, so there's all sorts of bits and pieces that I, I am involved in at the moment and plenty more that keep grabbing my attention. So settle down, grab a cup of tea and let's see what I've been up to in the past few weeks. <laughs> Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. I know several of you have come through the uh, spindle spinning tutorials that I've been uploading throughout Tour de Fleece and the Smile 2019. Several of you recommended by ba Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns as well, so obviously thank you Grace for that shout out, much appreciated. Uh, if you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed and Ding the bell down below to get notifications by all means do so we are almost at 200 subscribers which is amazing I think we're about 185 ish last time I checked and um, so there will be a giveaway coming at some point relatively soon I haven't quite decided whether it's going to be 200 subscribers or 250 subscribers I guess it kind of depends on how many I get coming in between now and when I manage to work out what I'm going to give away um, I, those of you who have been here before will know that I don't have a massive stash because I haven't had the space to store a massive stash. I also don't really have the funding to buy a massive stash. So I can't, don't anticipate me getting a big stash in the short term, but I do now have a craft room, which is where I am sitting at the moment. It is yet to be organised. Everything is still in boxes. For those of you that aren't aware, we have just moved house. I was living in Buckinghamshire until last Tuesday, so the end of July, and um, now I'm living in Lincolnshire, um, actually not far from one of the houses where Pride and Prejudice was filmed. That's also where a BBC children's programme called Moondial was filmed, if you are old enough to remember that in the 80s, and of course in the UK. I don't know if it was broadcast elsewhere. Um, so what else do I need to say? Oh yes, you can find me on Instagram as Zozy Mosey, although I am considering changing that handle to you so you to match the channel. Let me know down below if you think that would be a good idea, as I know several of you follow me on Instagram already um, and know what sort of content that I share. It's, it's uh, largely crafting and cats at the moment. Um, so that's Instagram, I'm on Ravelry Zozy M. There is also a Ravelry group for this channel. So if you search you so you in the groups cha cha groups channel groups tab, that will come up. Uh, do pop along and join in there. I know that uh, a lot of you have come from the sewing community that I'm part of on Facebook, so we're not necessarily Ravelry users. Um, so there's not a massive amount of things happening in there as of yet, but I am hopeful that we will get a, a thriving community in there before too long, and then I can start doing knit along, spin alongs, crochet alongs through Ravelry, although I will obviously have another means of getting involved for those of you that aren't on Ravelry as well, um, for when I do make alongs that won't be sort of so, so craft specific or sew alongs, that kind of thing. Um, so that, that's all things that I've got planned in the future. Um, I'm also on Ravelry as a designer. I have one pattern currently available, which is the Mother's Love Cowl. That came out around Mother's Day in the UK, which was back in the spring. It's slightly earlier in the UK than it is in other countries. Um, it's a bandana cowl and it is available on Ravelry. So there'll be a link down below to that. It is also available on Lovecraft for those of you that are not Ravelry users. Although we'll predominantly be doing pattern support through the Ravelry group, just because that's where most knitters seem to be getting their patterns from. It made sense to keep the pattern support for the time being on that platform. Um, by all means, send me a direct message if you aren't a Ravelry user and you need support, um, and I will find another means of providing it, um, whether that be through a Facebook group or something else, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, I do also have a blog, which is at usou.com, although that is under review at the moment as well in terms of what direction I want to take it in. There's lots of things that I want to explore. 
I want to learn about nail binding. I want to learn about tatting. <laughs> I want to get into lace making. Uh, all kinds of things to, to get involved with. Um, so I'm, I'm considering what direction to take that in and how to develop the blog further. So do keep your eye out for that. Uh, so that's Instagram, that's Ravelry, that's the designs. Uh, I don't currently have an active Facebook page for the channel, but that may be coming if there's interest in it. Let me down below. Let me know down below if you think a Facebook group would be helpful for this channel. Um, so yeah, that's where I am. That's where you can find me. That's who I am. Um, and let's get cracking with the main part point of you being here. The stuff that I have made whilst I've been away, sorting out my move. Um, first of all, what am I wearing? This is not a new make. This is a top that I made last summer. It is the Spring Garden Tea, which is a pattern by Alana Dacos. Um, I got the pattern on Ravelry last year. Um, it's a very simple pattern. Um, there's lace on the shoulders in the in the pattern itself. There's not much, well there's no shaping through the body and I have repeated the lace pattern at the bottom but I've varied the length, the depth of it um, around the hemline. This is not something that's in the pattern, that's something that I've added. I've added an I-cord bind off to the hem, to the neck and I did a Russian bind off on the sleeves. All these Somo Ravelry notes tell me I cannot for the life of me remember what it is I did. Um, so I would need to look that up if I was to do it again. But I felt that the uh, armholes needed a bit of tidying up, the neck I needed a bit of tidying up after I'd finished knitting it. Um, but it is a simple knit. Um, I have knitted it out of Serda, Serda Toscana DK. Um, I can't remember what the colourway it is. Um, but it's a commercial yarn, it's a cotton yarn. It is a bit thicker than a lot of stuff that you would knit for summer, but being cotton, that's not so much of a problem. It hangs nicely, it's fairly loose fitting. I don't find it particularly warm, and I am somebody who feels the warmth. So I'm okay wearing it on a warm day. Um, it's good for, for spring and the cooler summer days. I wouldn't necessarily wear it when it's like 35, 40 degrees in a DK weight, but um, in the mid twenties and up to sort of 30 degrees, it's, it's kind of fine. Um, so yeah, it's quite a comfortable fit. And that's what I'm wearing, the same I made it last summer. Um, so yeah, so now we have finished objects. I have one finished crochet uh, project to show you, and then I have my spinning from Tour de Fleece to, to show you as well. Um, so let's start with the crochet. This is a fairly simple crocheted shawl, and it's quite special actually. I started this again last summer, but the yarn was bought for me the previous year by my partner, who actually went into our then local yarn shop, the Spotted Sheep in Leighton Buzzard, and bought me a skein of um, Batik Swirl, so it's Starcraft Batik Swirl, which is a, an acrylic and wool blend. Um, it was his first time going into a yarn shop unaided, unsupervised, um, and he went in and he picked out this because he knows my favourite colour is purple. Um, the colours are gorgeous. I mean, I love the way the purple and the grey work together. It comes in a 200 gram skein. And when you buy this from the Spotted Sheep, they give you a free pattern that they've designed themselves. It's called the Elemental Crochet Cow. It is not available on Ravelry, I've looked. Um, so as far as I'm aware, you can only get it from the Spotted Sheep. It is a very simple pattern. It's a three row repeat. There are some eyelets in there, um, but you only need to know UK treble crochet, which is the US double crochet and chain stitch. Um, there's the occasional single stitch, I think in this, in the, in the um, no, there isn't. It's, it's all trebles and doubles the whole way through. And then there's tassels on each corner. So I've done three tassels as per the pattern with the, the last bit of the yarn. I do have a little bit left, but not masses. Um, to get the tassels a consistent sh shape and size, I wound them around my mobile phone. 
I, it seemed the best way to make it consistent. I haven't needed to trim them up too much. I've just uh, opened them where they folded. Um, and yeah, it's it's a huge shawl. I mean, this is a two, or pretty much a 200 gram shawl. So it is quite sizable. If I pop it on, see it wraps around nicely. And it comes a long way down the front. Um, so I've got my tassel hanging around the middle of my belly. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a sizable shawl. The wingspan is pretty large. And so it wraps around nicely. It's going to tuck in really well to my coat in the winter and clash beautifully with the red of my coat. It's like a burgundy red, it's not too bad. Um, so yes, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. It has taken me a little while to, to do it um, because I've been squirrelling other projects. Um, but given that it is currently the 6th of August and we are in summertime, it's a little bit warm to be wearing it at the moment. So I'm going to put that to one side. Leave it till later. Um, that is the only project I've finished that isn't spinning related throughout July. Um, because obviously Tour de Fleece. It was my first Tour de Fleece this year and I have basically joined all the teams. All of them. So if you look at my Tour de Fleece posts on Instagram, there are tons of hashtags. Because I, I joined in with everything. Um, before Tour de Fleece, I had already started spinning for the Smell 2019, which is being run by Grace of Purple's Travelling Yarns and Mina Knitting Expat um, over in their Ravelry groups, um, which was a three month spin along followed by a three month make along. Then they decided, sod it, let's all start making as soon as we finish spinning stuff. Um, so for the spinning portion, I already had. 500 grams of merino bamboo to spin up and some merino silk to spin up and uh, a Corridor Shetland beautiful cat and sparrow fibre to spin up. The merino silk was spun up before Tour de Fleece started, the cat and sparrow was spun up before Tour de Fleece started. They can be seen on my um, hand spun stash page in Ravelry which I will link below and I already started to spin up the 500 grams of merino bamboo. I'd spun up 150 grams and plied them and I had 50 grams waiting to be plied when Tour de Fleece started. So the merino bamboo I bought from Freya Jones in uh, Stoke Mandeville which is a spinning and weaving shop um, that was relatively local to my old house. It is in the St Osgith colourway so I started Tour de Fleece by plying this 50 gram skein of merino bamboo, yardages and everything before setting the twist can be seen on the hand spun page down below. Um, I will be remeasuring the twist and the weight of the yarn once I've set it. It's roughly a fingering to sportish weight maybe, it might puff up to a DK I'm hoping because I was aiming for something zweigish when I started spinning this up. Um, I need to see if I've got enough yardage. Um, I did also complete my other 300 grams of St Osgith, the Merino Bamboo. So I do have 500 grams of this. I'm not sure if I've got enough yardage for a Zweig out of it with one of the contrast colours, the Catasparra or the Merino Bamboo, the Merino Silk. Um, so I'll have to remeasure my yardage, um, as I said, my yarn weight. Um, once the twist has been set, because if, if I remember rightly, Zweig is a DK weight, could be right, could be fingering. Um, but I do have some other options that I'm thinking of for potential uses for this yarn. Um, there is, I think, quite a bit of variation in the yarn weight, because the yardage per weight of my skeins is all different. Um, but I am a relatively new spinner, so it's fine. They're not so far out that this it's going to cause me too many problems when I knit it up. Um, particularly if I'm alternating skeins, which I would probably need to do anyway because it's a blend and as I've spun it up there are obviously some variations um, with where the, the draft has pulled some of the colours through. Um, but that's my St Osgith. That'll be the main colour of a sweater at some point. Hopefully fairly soon because I want to knit it up for the smell. I also um, bought some fibre from uh, Barn 2 Yarn 
on behalf of my partner for my birthday present this year. Um, I bought a 100 gram bat in the glitter ball colourway, um, which is Corriedale, Shetland, Angelina, I believe. Details on the handspun page below. And there are some neps in there as well. So it's spun up into this gorgeousness. There's quite a bit of spark in there, which may not be coming through um, on the camera. Um, the neps were a bit of a bugger to spin on a spindle. They are small neps. Um, so you can see some of them there. If I should bring that more in front of me, maybe. So these little red spots are the neps. Uh, there's one just near that finger and there's one near that finger. Um, they're a nightmare. They flew all over the place. Some of them are going to fall off when I set the twist, I think. Um, so they were a bit tricky to work with, but hey, it's all learning. It's fine. Um, I have maintained them at, see that one there is, is loose and probably going to fall off. If I hold it against the wall, you can probably see it. There you go. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's probably going to fall off at some point. Um, again, it's a fingering sportish weight um, before setting the twist. Um, and yeah, I, I'm really pleased with this. I'll put a picture up of what the bat looked like before I spun it. Um, I split my bat into two 50 gram halves and then I split those halves into strips which I turned into folags. So I basically stripped it up and rolled them up and spun them as if they were rolags. Um, it's a blue, white, pink, purpley mix. Um, really nice combination of colours. No idea what this is going to end up being. It could potentially be contrast colour in my smell sweater. It's another option for that instead of the merino bamboo or possibly the merino silk that I've spun up before or the cat and sparrow, possibly in addition to, we'll see what the yard is like and which pattern I end up going with. Could be a hat, could be a funky little hat. I don't know if I've got enough yardage to do a shawl without it being combined with another skein or something. Speaking of which, also from Barn to Yarn, I bought a, um, as part of this birthday gift, um, so on behalf of my partner, I bought a um, sheep dip, which is like a mystery bag of yarn. Yeah, you get about 225 grams of, of various different fibres. So you get some locks, some carded, um, some uncarded. Uh, it depends what they've got in stock, really. And um, I got this. This was spun up from this. Uncarded, uncombed locks of Shetland Romney. It said Shetland X Romney on the packaging, so I'm assuming that means it's a Shetland Romney crossbreed because it doesn't seem to be blended fiber. It was an interesting spin, um, spinning it directly onto the spindle without it being combed and what have you. Um, but it does go rather nicely with my glitter ball. My merino silk is purple. It's uh, in a box at the moment, so I can't show it to you right now, but it is on my hands on page. And it would actually go quite well with my merino bamboo. So I've got lots of options for my con contrast colours when I do my hand spun sweater. Um, it'll be my first hand spun sweater, so it's going to be interesting. I've only knit with my hand spun once before, which was the red and green shawl that is in my project page. Um, so I will link that down here as well. Um, it should be quite a different experience because this is a much finer weight of yarn um, and obviously there'll be shaping and all that sort of stuff going on and alternating skeins which is not something I, I really do. Um, if you look at my um, big red sweater which I did in blue um, with the stripes, I didn't even bother to do helical knitting for the stripes um, so I have got the jogs going up the side um, but I'm going to probably try helical knitting for my sweater um, advance those skills a bit more. Um, the main reason that I don't generally alternate skeins is I tend to knit my garments with commercial yarn because hand dyed yarn is gorgeous and beautiful and amazing and it takes a lot of skill but that is reflected in the price. Um, so I can generally only buy one or two skeins at a time and um, so they're more likely to find their way into socks and shawls than they are into garments. Okay so that's all my finished items. Um, so moving on to my works in progress. 
Um, most of my works in progress are in a box that's cunningly labelled current whips so that I know that that is the box that I need to unpack first out of all of my craft boxes because um, I've got my, my looms in one, I've got sewing patterns in another, that kind of thing. Um, so this is another project that I've been working on for a little while. This uh, pattern came out before Woolen. Not that I went to Woolen, but um, yeah, this is the Fenola pattern. And I'm showing you the back. Show you the front. So this is a Tunisian crochet shawl. Um, it's made up of 14 segments and then a, a bar across the top, um, a band across the top. Um, I am probably going to go down this side and put some single crochets on to neaten it up. Um, I have chosen to do mine in a, kind of a scrappy type way. I'm going to repeat the same set on colours as long as my yarn holds out. Um, this colourway, the only the yarn that I bought for this shawl, is Painted Desert uh, in the Peridot colourway. So that's an Australian yarn. Uh, it's Australian wool but made in, in China. Um, it's like a, a variegated green. Then I have some minis from uh, Manus del Uruguay set. So that's this one, this one, this one, this one and this one. It's a set of five minis so they're the, the semi-solids. And this colourful stripey one is a hand dyed, I think it was Dina's House of Yarns, or Dina's House of Crafts rather, can't remember the name of the colourway but the details are on the project page which will be down, linked down below. I am currently working on my eighth, ninth even segment, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, ninth segment and I'm working on the little fan bit at the bottom. So I need to repeat this segment another three times and go all the way back up to the top of the segment and repeat in the next colour, which will be this one. Um, so it's a relatively shallow shawl. It's going, it's going to have a band on the top. I might do a double height band because I should have enough of this yarn left to do that. Um, Carola, my friend from my online knit night, who is Otherworldly Yarns, has also worked up this shawl and she has extended the band on the top to make it a little bit deeper so I may do the same. Um, she did hers in two colours which I believe were both her own yarns so by all means check those out because it looks awesome. Some Her colourways are amazing. Um, so that's my work in progress and that's pretty much the bulk of what I have to talk to you about today. Um, as I say, we have been moving house and looking, we had house hunting going on, we had packing going on, and then the actual move. Um, as I say, we only got in on the 30th of um, July. So we've only been in this property for a week. It is a larger property to the property that we were in before, which is why I have a craft room in the making. Um, but yeah, it is full of boxes. I mean, all down this side is boxes at the moment, and behind the camera, underneath the window, is boxes and what have you. But I'm impressed with the lighting. I haven't had to put my studio lights up today. This is natural light in this room. Um, and it's really not too bad. It's shown up my colours quite well. Um, so it's a two bedroom house, basically. Um, this would be too small for an adult's bedroom. Um, it's obviously designed for first child. Um, we don't have one of those, we have cats instead. Um, so yeah, this will be where I store my crop stuff. Um, one of the benefits of packing up a house was that you find stuff that you've been looking for for ages. And I actually uncovered my loose set. If you don't know what a loose set is, it's one of these. Um, I know some people, uh, particularly if they've been at a Waldorf school, uh, will refer to this as a knitting fork. Um, they do come in other sizes, um, but you use this to make cording. Um, you might remember French knitting where you have like, the knitting dolly with the four staples in the top and you, you wind the yarn around, look it over. This works in the same way. It is it's very much the same principle. So anything that you can make with the knitting dolly, you can pretty much make with one of these. Um, I bought this at a reenactors and LARPers fair that I was doing a play at years and years ago um, from Lucy the Tudor, which is the same person that I bought my um, wooden heddle and my weaving tablets from. 
Um, I am still exploring all the possibilities of things that you can make with this because there are apparently lots of different types of cords you can do with it. Um, at the moment I'm just a, I'm a basic user so I, I wrap my, my cord around, yarn around rather, I'm using embroidery floss and then I just hook it over the top to make a stitch and continue on in the same way. So let me know down below if you would like a closer up tutorial type video of using the Lucette. It is a beautifully portable project. Um, it actually fits in an adult coat pocket. I used to take this when I first got it on my commute to work, travelling on the train into London, um, sitting on the tube, because I could hold it in my hand while away the time, just spinning it around and making cording. So it's really useful for that sort of point of view. Um, I think nail binding might be a similarly portable project, so I'm going to give that a go as well. I haven't done that yet, don't know when I'm going to have a go. I'm probably not going to buy a nail binding needle in the short term because I don't know if I like it. Um, I don't see the point of investing in something if I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it. Um, from what I can gather, you can actually do nail binding with a normal wool needle, a tapestry needle, and I've got those. Um, so I'll give it a go with those. Um, I would like to give tatting a go, but I will need to buy something for that because you need a shuttle as far as I can tell. And I want to get out my lace making supplies again and uh, have a go at that. There's more weaving stuff I want to do. Um, I think I might need a few more hours in the day. Anyone else find that? But yes, I do have lots of plans for things to show you. Um, let me know down below if there's anything in particular that I already do that you would like to see more of. Um, the spinning videos have been really popular. I know the Inkle Loom video has been really popular so I have got more spinning and Inkle weaving um, videos planned. Um, but yeah, if you would like to, to join me on my adventures in nail bending let me know. Um, and if you'd like to see more of the loose set as I sort of develop my skills there, let me know. Um, and uh, other than that, that's all I have for you today. So until next time, bye bye for now. Thank you.